On today's Star Wars Legends lore video, we take a deep dive into the Empire's books. The Imperial Navy was responsible not only for fighting the Rebel Alliance, but also patrolling and protecting the galaxy and Imperial systems. But how much did such a gargantuan effort cost on a yearly basis and in total? The Imperial Sourcebook tells us that at its most bloated and unwieldy, the Empire's Navy was comprised of 25,000 Imperial Star Destroyers. These ISDs made up the backbone of Imperial military might and will take up a big portion of the budget, so let's cover them first. A single Star Destroyer costs nearly 150 million credits, which is inconsistently cheap. Arguably, this is due to the total militarization of the Empire, the commonality of nationalized shipyards, and abundant resource mining, but as I'll discuss later, I think there is some issue with the amount a credit is worth in Star Wars Legends, but I'll talk about that later. For now, a single Star Destroyer, again, 150 million credits. For all Imperial Star Destroyers, that gives us a purchase price of about 3.75 trillion. Now, obviously there is some variation, the Imperial 2 was a little less expensive than the Imp 1, but we're dealing with large numbers here, so precision is not required. Also, keep in mind, these would have been all new ships, most purchased just within 20 or so years, because the Republic barely used Imperial style Star Destroyers and the Venator was such a different ship that refits were not a viable way to create the fleet. However, the actual purchase and construction price only covered a portion of ship costs. As Booster Tarek discovered during his operation of the Errant Venture, Star Destroyers are extraordinarily expensive to operate and maintain. Besides for hiring an educated crew of thousands, systems consistently needed to be replaced, as did munitions parts, etc. We've never actually received the operating costs of an Imperial Star Destroyer and trying to figure it out in the Star Wars universe is basically impossible. So we'll look to the real world for a best estimate. The Nimitz class aircraft carrier, a notoriously expensive and difficult to maintain ship, officially has an average annual operating and maintenance cost of $350 million, representing about 4% of the initial purchase price. Some have debated that number and I think that in reality, it's likely much higher, but I'll assume, somewhat dubiously, that the operating costs of a vessel scales up in a linear fashion when compared with the purchase price. Because spaceships are more complicated than real world ships, and I think the Galactic Empire is even more wasteful than the US military, I'll say that Star Wars ships typically pay about 10% of their initial price in operating and maintenance costs. And that's based on 365 days of service, which thankfully is basically a year in Star Wars. Wars, at least a year based on the Coruscant calendar. Now again, this could be far, far more. I do however doubt that the Empire pays its personnel very well, and perhaps a high degree of standardization, advanced maintenance technology, and the use of droids keeps costs down. We'll come back to this topic in a bit, but let's return to ship valuation. Imperial Star Destroyers were, of course, not the only ships within the Imperial Navy. On the larger side, we have dreadnoughts and battlecruisers, well, there are an unknowable amount and variety of smaller ships. Let's start with the larger side, and we really just have to guess here. I'll say that the Empire made use of about 300 dreadnoughts and battlecruisers. Because we don't really have any prices for these ships and there are so many varieties, I'll give the average cost of a dreadnought slash battlecruiser as three times that of a Star Destroyer. Now obviously something like an Executor would be about 10 times as much, but those ships were relatively rare. Much more common would have been something like the Allegiance, which was basically just an upscaled Imperial Star Destroyer and was probably only slightly more expensive. With three times, that gives the Dreadnoughts a valuation of 135 billion credits. Even if we say that a Dreadnought was 10 times as much as a Star Destroyer, the total cost for the vessels would still represent a relatively small part of the Imperial budget. However, as I mentioned, we also have thousands of smaller ships. It's almost impossible to estimate what this would cost the Empire. Even numbers are are hard to guess here, but I think reasonably, the Empire would have made use of 30 smaller ships for every Star Destroyer. Some of these ships would have been a part of larger fleets, operating as corvettes or small cruisers, while a great many would have been on their own, patrolling less important areas of space. Anyway, in total, that gives us about 750,000 ships. Some of these would have been fairly expensive, like the 57 million credit Victory 1, while others, like the 7 million Dreadnought Cruiser, would have been quite cheap. I think the Nebula on B, which costs 8.5 million, would be pretty close to the average, but in total I'll bump it up to 10. 
with 750,000 ships at 10 million piece, that gives us a purchase price of 7.5 trillion. The last thing to consider is starfighters. Keep in mind, while ships in lore are given a total fighter complement, that doesn't represent the average fighters actually carried. Spitballing here, I think the typical Star Destroyer would have had three squadrons of fighters, an average of 10 for larger ships, and one for every smaller ship. Many smaller ships would have no starfighters, some like the Victory would have perhaps had two squadrons. In total, that would give us about 800,000 squadrons or almost 10 million fighters. A single standard TIE LN was cheap, about 60,000 credits. However, more expensive models like the Interceptor or Defender of course existed. I think the price of 100,000 credits per fighter is fair, as it represents the fact that more expensive TIEs were common, but that TIE LNs were nevertheless the majority. That gives us a value of 1 trillion credits. Now it's time to do some math and find out the total value of the active Imperial Navy at its most bloated. A couple of things in mind. I've made a ton of assumptions here, some with data, some without, and I've went back and forth on a bunch of numbers. For example, at one point I had one fighter for every two smaller ships, at one point I had 10 smaller ships for every Star Destroyer rather than 30. Needless to say, none of this is consistent and I could very well be off by several orders of magnitude. We're also only considering ships here. I've ignored orbital facilities, super weapons, special projects, space stations, and ground units that are attached to the Imperial Navy. At its height, the Empire had a fleet valued at 12.385 trillion credits. That includes 3.75 trillion credits worth of Star Destroyers, 135 billion credits worth of Dreadnoughts, 7.5 trillion credits of smaller ships, and 1 trillion credits of Starfighters. The 12.385 number is actually exceedingly low and reflects, I believe, a serious issue with the price of starships in Legends. In an excellent video which I'll link above, Generation Tech discovered that a galactic credit is consistently about 1.52 US dollars, but credit valuation breaks down significantly when looking at high technology like starships. This is clearly illustrated by converting the galactic military value to US dollars, it would be under 20 trillion. In reality, the United States alone has assets over $250 trillion. In other words, 10 times as much, and that's one country, not a galactic spanning government. In reality, the Star Destroyer, which I've kind of used as a baseline price throughout this video, needs to be about a thousand times more expensive to be consistent with the rest of lore. Then the ties and the smaller ships could be adjusted accordingly, maintaining the same percentage difference. But let's now look at operating cost, and again, I came up with that 10% figure. It could be totally wrong. In reality, it could cost 100% of an initial ship's price to operate it year Early, or there could be no connection between the initial value and the cost at all. But 10% of 12.385 is over a trillion credits. But again, that's just for the ships within the Navy. The operating cost does also include the military personnel operating the vessel. However, any military personnel who don't actually contribute to the running of the ships, say an attached stormtrooper squad, would not be included. I've also, as I said, ignored orbital facilities, super weapons, as well as RD which I do think would be relatively minor compared to the sheer number of ships outputted. But this has all just been my opinion. What do you think? Have I made some serious errors in the assumptions I've made? Can someone with military experience chime in about the cost of actually running a large vessel compared to the purchase price? Are they related whatsoever? Let me know all of that and more down in the comments, as well as any ideas you guys have for future videos. Until next time guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Eckhart's Ladder. If you want more of the channel, you you can follow me on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. You can join the Discord at discord.gg slash Eckhart's Ladder. Or if you really want to support the channel, consider becoming a Patreon where you'll get access to exclusive rewards. All of that and more down in the description. Anyway, until next time guys, this has been your host Eckhart's Ladder. May the Force be with you.